Each product inside the Power Platform is amazing on its own, but uh, most enterprises get even more value when you use them together. And what if we try to use two of my favorite products in the Power Platform, Power Automate, number one in my heart, and Power Apps, a close second, together to build a real business solution. Today, I'm super happy to be joined by uh, Microsoft MVP and good friend Laura Rogers. Hey. Laura, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for uh, having me. Today, we're at the Power Platform Community Conference recording this, and this week you had a session, Power Automate and Power Apps Better Together. I think that yes. was the title, right? Yes. You told me right before recording that you showed something really cool and that there's different ways to actually integrate them. So what I want you to show me is everything about this, because usually I only do the Power Automate stuff, so I want to okay. learn how people call it from Power Apps. Okay. Well, you may notice that when you're in Power Apps, you actually have a Power Automate little section in here that lets you integrate Power Apps and Power Automate. But my whole session was really about the concept of all the other ways really that you can use this integration without having to use that specific way. So a couple of things that I went over was you can send emails directly from a Power App. So there you can use the Office 365 Outlook connector and um, be able to just write some functions. And then it instantly goes straight from the Power App without needing a flow. So that's one like common thing that yeah. people need a flow to do. Another thing is you can just use patching. So if you had a situation where you needed to, you know, somebody fills out a form and you need it to not just submit that one form, but maybe you needed a couple of other things in other lists to get created automatically. You can just use patching from your Power App. So those are just common things that people might need to automate that, um, that you, again, you can avoid using a flow altogether. But even if you do need a flow, you could still do a different way. You could just have a flow that triggers when the item gets created, just in SharePoint, Dataverse, wherever your item is. And your trigger can just be based off of the, the item getting created or modified. So yet again, you don't need to use this integration for kind of any of those scenarios. That's a big question I had in my <laughs> workshop on Sunday. Uh, people asked me this exact scenario, is it better to do it from the Power App or from the data source? And I'm team data source. Oh. This way it's a bit more separate. I have, you know, if something needs to be debugged, I have two different systems, one that saves into SharePoint and one that triggers in SharePoint. I'm more team that to keep them separate, but I guess it depends on the scenario. It de definitely does. I like to try and keep it as simple as possible so have less moving pieces. Okay. So in situations where I can just simply have a command that sends an email straight from the yeah. app and that's oh, yeah, really all that's needed, something simple If you only like have that. one action, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, it's definitely a by a per situation, you know, kind of decision that you are going to be making. Yeah. Well, you told me you built something cool yes. in your session, a full process. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I'll, I'll go ahead and run it and then show you like what it does. And then we'll dig in and I'll show you how I built it. So, awesome. so again, I was talking about all these reasons not to use this integration, but here's a good example. I have customers and have a list of customers in here and then each customer I can go to the list of projects for that customer. So here are all the AdventureWorks projects. So nice. then for each project, I can go to just, this is just the form with all the information about that project. And then here's where the magic happens. I am working with a new customer, I've got a new project and they need to generate a new statement of work. So I just click create statement of work. And then you can see the little dots going across. <laughs> so what it's doing is it's kicking off a flow that's creating a file, it's putting the data about that project in the file, and then it's converting it to PDF, and here it just finished running. So now this little View PDF button appears. Okay. Wow, <laughs> it already opened. Yeah, so there is the statement of work that it just generated, and uh, just based off of the data in that form, and it, so now it's a PDF file. That is really awesome, because in the UI, you can see that it's working, it's working, and then the other button appears at the end. Right. That is really cool. Right. Can so. you add like a loading screen or? Yeah, wait, you could. Uh -huh. you could can you get the working swirly. on it PDF? Uh, <laughs> you know, remember the SharePoint working on it GIF. Oh, yeah. Can you add that in there? There it Well, there is actually a control in Power Apps that does that functionality. So, let me, um, so oh, it just took me to where 
It took you to it, SharePoint. I had it create the file in SharePoint. So that's okay. the library where it got created. So let me go F11, back out of there. And then, so that's how it works. Now let's go look at what the flow is actually doing. So this flow is based off of the trigger. It's the Power Apps trigger. It used to just be called Power Apps, but now it's called When Power Apps Calls a Flow. So what you do is you decide what information you want to send over from the Power App to the flow. So the most simple way to do this is you don't need to send all these separate fields and all this di these different pieces of information. If you have the ID of the item, That's then all you, you need. need is the ID. So all I'm sending over is the project ID from the Power App. And so what it's doing is it's going to get that item. So you use the get item action when you want to get a single item. So I have that ID and that gives me all the data about that project, yeah. all the columns. And then since this is a parent child relationship, we have a customer that have, might have multiple projects. I have a lookup field in okay. the project to the customer. So then since it's a lookup, I actually have I'm going to get a, do a get item again to get that one customer. And then I have the customer lookup ID. So yeah. the, the, I'm using the ID of the customer. So now I can I have all the information about the project and all the information about the nice. customer. And I can use all that in my statement of work. Now that I have all that data. So what I did was I'm creating an HTML file, okay. which is just a very like no, no frills, no uh, premium connector, just simple way of generating a file. We love that. But I used Copilot to create the HTML for me. I didn't feel like writing all this code. I'm not a coder. So I asked Copilot to create a statement of work in HTML and I told it a list of all the fields that I wanted to okay. insert into this demo statement of work. And I told it to write the HTML for me and to basically put little asterisks like, um, like this, like yeah. project on where the actual yeah, parameters it, are right, going to go. Right, in all the spots where I needed to put the fields. So then it just gave me all this code. I pasted it into this compose action, which is going to compose all this HTML for me. And I just inserted like customer name, project start, project nice. end, and project description and inserted them in the HTML. And then um, I'm using the, there's a free convert to PDF when you, it's not an extra cost when you yeah. use it in OneDrive. So I'm creating the file, this HTML file in OneDrive. So I'm just taking the customer name, statement of work, and then I want it to be unique. So I'm yeah. just sticking this format date time of right now awesome. on it. And then I'm taking the content of this HTML. So it's just creating a .html file okay. temporarily in OneDrive. And then I use, since it, it has to be in OneDrive to do this, and I'm using the convert file action to convert it to PDF. And then again, once it converts it to PDF, you still have to create that PDF somewhere. It doesn't, it really exists yet. Oh, yeah. It's just kind of floating. It's only in the your body exists. Yeah. 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 So then I go ahead and create that PDF file in my statement of work library in SharePoint, just using that file name and that file content of that PDF it just created. I really love this because most people would just go and search for PDF and then you only have the premium stuff. But you found a way to created, converted with OneDrive, and then just created directly in SharePoint. That's amazing. Yes. There's so many ways to save licenses. <laughs> yes. Well, and like, so one nobody of my... <laughs> from Microsoft watches this and gets ideas. <laughs> one of my favorite connectors actually is the Microsoft Word template connector, but it is a premium connector, yes. but it lets you just create a Word template and then plop all the fields yeah. into the action, and then it creates the document that way. But the HTML one is course free, but you have to know code. So then um, what I do is I create a sharing link for that file it just created in SharePoint. And I just like, you, you do have that link to item dynamic yeah. content for everything in SharePoint. I just like for the purposes of making it a link that is just consistently going to work no matter okay. where, what device they're on or anything like yeah. that. I just, the sharing link is just more reliable to me. Okay. So creating a sharing link and then the magic. Now, again, one thing I forgot to add on here is you would then delete that temporary OneDrive okay. file. So I just don't have that on here, but you would do a delete file action yeah. so that you don't have all these piling up. Then that, so the person who clicked the button in the in the Power App is now sitting there waiting and watching the dots go across. So then I'm telling it to respond. And so I'm just, I created a, an output parameter to send back to the Power App. And that is just my sharing link. Awesome. So that's the flow that's running. And then the, this button, to create the statement of work. 
No. Did you know? <laughs> Anytime you want, when you're using this integration, if you want to send the data and wait for it to come back, you have to wrap it in a variable. So okay. one thing I forgot to show you real quick was um, that you have to add that flow. So once you've created the flow that has the Power App trigger, yeah. all your flows that have Power App triggers are going to be listed here when you click to add a flow. So I guess an important thing is to yeah. create it in the right Power Platform environment. Oh, that's true. Because this way, the, both the app and the flow are in the same environment. Same solution, too. Same solution, uh -huh. too. So now I've got it listed here. So what it lets me do is, and this is one of those kind of weird things that you just have to know. Okay. Because So you have to just know that it's going to be the name of your flow dot run. And so okay. wherever you want this to run, that's where you're gonna, you're gonna use this syntax of the name of your flow, dot run, and then you tell it. So in this case, all I am sending it over is the ID of that project. So it says galprojects.selected.id equals and 91. Gal projects is the name of your gallery in Power right. Apps, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's whatever project I had clicked on. And so since I only created that one input parameter in the flow, I'm, okay. I've only got one piece of information I'm sending over to, and it's just that, um, that ID. So, but in order to get it to wait for the flow yeah. to run and then to give information back to the user, wrapping it in a variable with a set function is the way that you get it to do that. Because if I just kick this off, just this by itself, it would just go off and run the flow and it wouldn't be waiting and getting you information back. would just back do it right away thinking it's a background one. Right, exactly. So I say var statement of work and okay. I set it and then it goes and runs the flow and then let me go ahead and just run one. And then I'll show you that other button that appears. It's so pretty fast for everything it does. It takes under 30 seconds. Yeah. No, that one was even faster even than faster, before. Even faster, yeah. You're right, though. You, there's a little spinning wheel control that you could use, and you could you could get it to. I would just show. love to get the old SharePoint one working on it <laughs> to give people <laughs> scare them a little bit, especially people with you know old SharePoint experience. Oh, yeah, that'd be hilarious. I remember that. Um, so in Power Apps, the launch function is the one that you use if you want it to open a website and it'll okay. open it in another tab. So when you use the launch function, all you have to give it is a URL. So this is that sharing link that the yeah. flow is sending back. So it's saying launch, and I've got my variable. And whenever I, I had wrapped that in a variable that I showed you a second ago, whenever you do that and you click dot, any parameters that you're sending back from the flow at the end, those will yeah. all be listed here. So, but I only created one. So. Yeah. so then I have in the visible property. So is it a good practice to all, no, have no spaces? In all the parameters, try to keep it as simple as possible. Yeah. It'll I kinda, probably I work. To, I tend but, to do that. Yes. But don't yes, do it. Yes. And the name of the flow, too, because it creates that function that yeah. is the name of your flow. And so it just smashed it all together. So it's totally fine. But so then I'm just saying if this variable is not blank, then show this button. Okay. So then once it gets populated with the URL, then it appears. And then I wanted this one to gray out. So I said, Display mode. If the variable is blank, it's display mode dot edit, which means it's clickable. Yeah. Otherwise, display mode dot disabled. Awesome. So that is really cool. Yeah. I love I love the interactivity that you only see the <laughs> stuff that actually works. Because if people don't need to see buttons that don't do anything right, anymore. Right. That's true. Uh, and then just one more thing is for this back button. I use, I'm using the Power Apps toolbar control here. So in that um, back button, I'm making it go back and I'm blanking out that variable. So awesome. that next this time way. I open another one, it won't think it's already got the... Yeah, because if not, it would just appear already the view PDF, yes. which doesn't exist. Yes. Yeah, so that's the whole solution. It was the kicking that... off here, kicking off the flow, waiting for it to come back. and then. I, I love how cool you built it that... It looks so simple to make now. <laughs> okay. But when you showed me at the beginning, you showed it to me, I was like, this is going to be complicated. Oh. This is going to be a lot of steps and everything. But this was super easy. This was awesome. Oh, great. Yeah, I'm glad you liked it. Uh, thank you very much for showing us this. One final question I have for you. Since uh, you do Power Automate training like me, Yes. what do you think about Microsoft moving the actions back under, like in Classic? 
Oh, they changing are. Changing the... <laughs> <laughs> you missed the keynote. So they're bringing it back like in classic. Instead of being I on like the left... I like being able to see all that information. Like, especially in training and screenshots, yeah. it has everything just there. It's like, that's huge. I love that. So, yeah, I totally knew they were doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like it. But I feel like I have to update a lot of things now. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so true. We both do. Luckily, yeah. I, I was one. I was gonna say when you opened Power Automate, I was like, "Do you have the new experience or not yet?" Oh, I don't we don't we have did. it yet, but by the end of the year, just the actions and everything will be under a bit like the classic designer, but with a modern look. Oh, okay. So yeah. that will be quite fun. Uh, but thank you so much. I did mention you do a lot of training. Can you tell everybody some of the training you have available and uh, where they can find it? Sure. Um, my company is IW Mentor. It stands for Information Worker Mentor. So it's IWMentor.com. And I have about 45 plus hours worth of training on SharePoint, Power Apps, Power Automate. I have advanced classes in Power Apps and Power Automate. I have OneDrive, Planner, Copilot, Microsoft Forms, Microsoft Lists. And I have this plan called Ultimate that it just includes all of that training. And so you can subscribe monthly or yearly. And I have a huge Cyber Monday, Black Friday, Cyber Monday sale coming up. Ooh, in that's about awesome. a month, yeah, and then there's a 40% discount. So head over to iwmentor.com and awesome. I'll, I'll make sure I'll have a link <laughs> inside the chat. Uh, inside the chat, I'll have a link inside the description below so you can access it easily. So if you want to build cool things like that in a simple way, like you just explained, make sure to check it out. If you're a, a business professional, information worker, uh, there's no better training out there. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Uh, for everybody here, if you enjoyed this video, please like it, uh, subscribe to the channel, and uh, on the screen right now, you're going to see some another video that we recorded at the Power Platform Community Conference. So, see you there. <laughs>